Hello everyone. So uh, in this segment, we are going to talk about vector and 2D vector. So um, so far, we have learned how to write object-oriented uh, programming. We uh, we know how to write class and how to uh, declare object. So this topic is actually uh, it's not related with object-oriented programming. We are going to see about a, a new data type. Okay. Um, this uh, this data type vector we can use as an alternative of array. So what is a vector? Uh, a vector we are going to use vector as an alternative data type of array. So if you remember in uh, our earlier discussion of uh, review of C++ we talked about an aggregate data type. So that was actually uh, aggregate data type array. So that was actually our first uh, introduction with an aggregate data type so which is an array so vector we are going to use as an alternative use of array so why is that when we discussed about array one um, major disadvantage of array was array when we declare an array array is actually a fixed size so what does that mean is that when we, we are going to declare an array, we have to specifically mention the size of the array. For example, like we are declaring an array like that 50. Okay. So when we declare an array, we are saying that this array is going to store integer variable and the size of the array is 50. So this means actually this is the maximum size of the array. So what happens when we declare an array, the compiler actually uh, does the memory allocation so that the memory uh, and it's a contiguous memory allocation so that this memory allocation store up to 50 integer variables. Okay, so that's why we have to explicitly mention what will be the maximum size of the array. Okay, and what is the problem about that? Uh, I mean, we are saying that the array is a fixed size, but what is why that is a problem? Now, you have declared an array with size 50. Okay, but let's see you are going to take input from user. And we take input from user at the runtime, right? We run the program and we take input from the user. Now, for example, when you are taking input, uh, I mean, you wrote the program that uh, you have actually more than 50 inputs. Okay, so at the runtime, it seems like that you may need more inputs than 50. Okay, so the input size is greater than 50. So what happens actually during the runtime, you cannot, okay, you can't increase the size of the array. So 50 means actually this is the maximum size of the array. You can have, uh, I mean, less than 50 input, less than 50 data in your array, but you cannot have more than 50 data in your array. All right. So that is one major disadvantage of array in C++. Okay. So in C++ array, the regular static array. Okay. Static array means it's a fixed size of array. Okay. There is another alternative of array, which is still array, but this is known as a dynamic array. All right. So in dynamic array, we can decide about the size of the array during the runtime. Okay. But still, it, it is not going to resolve the whole problem. The only difference is that in dynamic array, we can decide about the size of the array in during runtime. Okay. So we're going to talk about dynamic array when we'll cover uh, the topic pointer. Okay. All right, but uh, we are talking about static error right now and we are going to see another alternative how we can actually resolve this issue. So there is another data type known as vector. Okay, so vector is actually not a primary data type. What a vector is, vector has been defined, a programming programmer defined data type and vector has been implemented actually using the concept of class. All right. So, but we can use vector as an alternative of array. So the major advantage of array is that, okay, vector can grow and shrink during the runtime. 
all right so when you are, we are going to declare a vector we do not have to explicitly say what is going to be the size of the vector and believe me in many cases we may not know what will be the size of the vector for example uh, like um, in one run you may have like 50 students okay so that means you have to take input for 50 students so in another run you may think that you are going to need much less size same probably 20 so in that case the whole 30 memory allocation is going to be completely wasted or in another run you may need actually like 70 students okay in 70 inputs all right for your program so in that case actually you do not have to decide what is going to be the size of your array all right so in that case you can use vector vector doesn't need any size all right and size means actually you do not have to decide about the size during compile time okay so the size of the vector can grow and shrink during the program execution okay now how the vector has been defined the vector has been actually defined using standard template library in short you can tell it like stl and it has been actually uh, designed using the concept of class it's actually a template class now don't worry about what does this template means we will also talk about template uh, at the end of our semester all right but just for now just know that temp uh, vector has been defined using class okay so it's a class data type and it's a c++ defined class data type so we can just use vector as exactly like regular data type all right all right so in this class we are going to actually talk about uh, one dimensional vector 1d vector and uh, we're also going to see two dimensional vector okay now a vector is uh, there are some similarity between vector and array because vector has also a base type okay and vector also collects a base type value now how we are going to declare a vector we are going to declare a vector like first of all we are going to we have to include the library vector okay and then in our main program or in any other function how we can declare a vector using this syntax we are going to declare a vector we are going to use the keyword vector then we are going to use this symbol this symbol is actually specifically used for template class okay now don't worry about that what is a template class just for now know the syntax about how to declare a vector so this is saying that we are declaring a vector the vector type is integer and the name of the vector is a okay so you can see that here i am not uh, giving any size okay so what it is going to do this uh, declaration is going to create a vector a okay where the size of the vector is zero all right and this vector a can store store integer data okay store a collection of integer value all right but when you declare a vector like this it is completely it is going to create a completely empty vector a vector that doesn't have any size as we are saying that it ha it's actually a class type a vector is actually a class type you know that each class type means uh, also each class can have some member function right so when you declare a vector you can also call a member function like size during the runtime to know what is the size of the vector when you cre create a initial vector like that you can actually like see what is the size of the vector by typing a dot size and you will see that the size of the vector is zero we're going to use the namespace std okay you will see that this is going to print the size of the vector is zero now during the runtime you can actually keep inserting values in the vector okay all right so now we are going to be familiar with some function okay some basic function uh, with this vector 
which are actually member function okay now this is going to declare a vector of type int and this is going to declare a vector completely empty vector this vector we are we are going to find out that the size of the vector is zero so it is going to print zero okay and this is going to call actually the default constructor all right now how we are how we can keep adding elements in the vector there is a function pushback okay so let's see you have a vector so this is uh, this is going to create a empty vector now what we can do let's run a loop okay uh, uh, let me push back without running a loop then we're going to see how to push back with inside a loop so i can insert a item in a vector like using this function 10 so first this is going to create a vector like that just no value then i'm pushing back one value 10 so this is going to add a value 10 here so let's insert another value push back 20 so this is going to push another value at the end of the vector and this is going to insert 20 so after each pushback you can actually by uh, test what is the size of the vector and you are going to keep seeing that the size is going to be incremented after each pushback now the size is 1 and after this pushback the size is going to be 2 and you can see how dynamically we are actually in inserting one value one after another okay you do not have to worry uh, you do not have to be worried about what is going to be your initial size of the vector okay you create an empty vector and during the runtime you can push back an item in, inside the vector and you can also run a for loop like that okay v dot pushback i okay so this is going to push back the value inside the loop all right so here i'm running the loop five times so this is going to insert five items from uh, what it is going to push i'm pushing actually the value of i so it is going to push the value from 0 1 2 3 4 okay so uh, and okay so this is going to insert the value from 0 to 4 insert inside the vector okay now after i have pushed back 10 and 20 okay this vector has 10 and 20 now after that if i run this for loop this is going to insert 0 1 2 3 4 okay so um pushback means it is going to always insert a item at the end of the vector okay another mem member function size during uh, i mean uh, during the runtime you can actually check what is the size of the vector okay and it is it is going to return the current number of elements in the vector okay for example like after this for loop if you are going to print the size of the vector it is going to print 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 size of the vector is going to be 7 okay so this is much more uh, cooler uh, option okay uh, I mean just an alternative option of using array so if you are uh, sure about what will be the size of the array then uh, what will be the size of the array in that case you can just use array okay but sometime actually depending on our program we may not know what is going to be the size of the array for example let's say i am asking you to write a program that first take the size of uh, i mean size of your input so based on your application you may need 20 inputs or you may need 30 inputs all right so if the size of the input has to be decided during the runtime in that case actually you can declare a vector okay with a fixed size right so in that case the the alternative option is to use a I mean sorry so if you don't know the size of the vector you can't actually initialize a array all right you can initialize a array with a fixed size right so in that case the alternative option to use the vector 
okay so this is the uh, example of a program from your textbook and the chapter 7 has actually uh, the example we using the vector okay so we are talking about the vector after we talked about the class because the vector is an example of program defined class okay so vector is a class type all right so that's why each vector is a combination of member variables and member function each vector has actually a couple of member function so we are going to talk about some basic function and we are going to give you a link where you, you will find a lot of other member functions that has been defined inside the vector okay for example here we are declaring a vector and this vector is going to call the default constructor and this is going to create a vector of size 0 now here we are going to take input from the user okay so and this while loop is going to actually take input until the input is greater than 0 so when the input is less than 0 means it is going to stop the loop okay it is going to stop the loop and it is going to until uh, the value is so the loop will continue until the value of next is greater than 0 okay and inside the loop you can actually uh, run uh, you can actually run the uh, statement by uh, finding the size of the vector and inside the loop you will know that you will know that the size of the vector is incrementing okay inside the loop okay so that's the sample output that means uh, you are going to take a input so the size will be one you are going to insert another input the size will be two and that's how you can keep pushing back inside the vector during the runtime so that's the major difference between uh, that's the major difference between array and vector okay so another difference is uh, declare an array is like that we can also declare an array with a fixed size a not fixed size actually like that with a given size that's not a fixed size but it is going to create a vector okay it is going to create a vector with size 10 all right so and what will happen it is going to create a vector of size 10 and each of the value is going to be initialized with 0 okay 0 1 uh, sorry 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 all right now uh so there are some example here actually you can find out much more uh, much more function about the vector okay now how to uh, how to access the items in the vector okay we are inserting a vector using this pushback function and how to access the items in the vector it's important that we can access the items in the vector using the regular indexing okay for example like you have this vector and you keep inserted and now the vector looks like this okay one two three four five six seven eight all right you can access the vector using add function okay or also you can access the items in the vector using the indexing and here also index start from zero okay so v zero is going to give you the first element of the vector v1 is going to give you the second element of the vector v2 is going to give you the third element of the vector and the add function is also going to retrieve the specific item at a specific index okay for example add 0 is going to give you the first element or v dot at 1 is going to give you the second item of the vector okay so only difference is at is a uh, member function of the class and this is just an regular indexing okay so regular indexing regular operation also works with a class type okay and we can implement them using operator overloading but we are going to talk about that in the next segment okay i mean in the next class with our next topic 
so writing a vector is actually very straightforward so we, all we have to do we have to include the vector library okay uh, and we have to use the specific syntax all right so let me quickly show you how to write a vector and first we are going to show you how to write a one dimensional vector okay so here uh, i had actually the example of two dimensional vector but i want to show you first the use of one dimensional vector okay so first you have to include the vector library then you are going to declare a vector of type int okay now this a is a vector of type int but this is going to call the default constructor and the size of the vector is now zero and you can actually experiment it by typing the size of the uh, by printing the size of a okay now let me run a loop okay so what i want to do i want to actually insert 1 to 10 okay so these are going to be my value of uh, these are going to be my value that i want to insert inside the vector okay so i'm going to insert a dot pushback okay i so this is going to insert now first iteration this is going to i'm sorry i have to actually declare it so this is going to insert the value of i inside the loop so this is going to insert from 1 to 10 right this is going to insert 1 to 10 so let me print that okay and i i also want to print the size of the vector okay so okay so each each after each pushback this is going to increment the size of the vector okay so how i can print the vector all right now you can see i am actually running the for loop from zero because now i am going to print the vector and i am going to print the vector using indexing okay and as a regular array the indexing in vector also start from zero okay so I'm going to print C out a I okay separated with a white space. All right. Let me print. Uh, let me run that. so these are actually size of my vector this is printing size of the, the vector so this was my initial size initially my size of vector is zero and after each insertion the size is also being incremented okay and this is my last for loop printing i am printing the vector using a for loop and using indexing okay so that's why just remember always indexing start from zero okay so that's why my first element i can access the first element using the index zero the second element using index one right so that's why my, i'm having my for loop from zero to nine okay so you can also uh, like take input from the user all right you can also take input from the user and you keep inserting them the vector right now my vector has these many items from one to ten okay you can take a vector all right and what is now uh, and which position you are going to take the input right now your size you can actually know what is the size of your vector okay 
okay so that's not uh, actually i am trying to say so okay so let's say i'm running another for loop i is less than five okay i plus plus so that means i want to take another five inputs from user all right and i'm going to insert them okay So what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare another vector integer num. All right, I'm going to take the num as input. All right, and I'm going to push back that num in the vector. Okay. So what I'm doing, actually, I'm taking input from the user and I'm pushing back in the vector okay so what uh, now what is the situation here until this point my vector has item 1 to 10 okay so that means the size of vector is 10 so remember pushback means it is going to always insert the item at the end of the vector okay then again and this for loop is going to take five more inputs all right and this is going to push back the number in the vector okay so after the for loop the size of the vector should be 15 okay so let me run that so enter input let's see uh, 2 5 6 7 5 uh, so it has actually taken input all right i should have print the size of the vector see out right so let me run that again all right i'm going to take few inputs more to see just random input nine five okay and it is printing the size of the vector is now 15 so that's the uh, thing about vector it can grow okay it can grow during the runtime all right you can also delete uh, delete some values from the vector so that's why actually we are giving you a reference of this link and this link has a list of function that we can use from the vector okay and in the next segment i'm going to show you um, in the next video we are going to show you how to use a two-dimensional vector